And without them being stored on the servers, hackers have nothing to steal because it isn't even there. So much of our world is dominated by services that gobble up our personal information. They abuse that data, they sell it to the highest bidder, they don't protect it on their own servers. They're essentially leaving it out for ransom. And it really is time for a change. Now, the topic of today's video is going to bring that change. So let's hash it out. What if you could evaluate the truthfulness of a certain piece of information or a claim without ever exposing the information at all? What if I could determine if you and I have the exact same Bitcoin balance without ever knowing what your Bitcoin balance is and without you knowing what mine is? This all is possible with the use of zero knowledge proofs or ZKP as a lot of people call it. So what is a zero knowledge proof? Well, the name is actually quite apt in this case. In essence, a zero knowledge proof is just a process by which a prover of some sort of information can provide valid, believable proof that a certain piece of information or a certain statement is factual without ever exposing any raw information to the verifier at all. So if I'm trying to tell you that I have more than one Bitcoin in my balance, without ever exposing to you how much Bitcoin I have and making you believe that, that would be a process that a zero knowledge proof would be useful. In that case, you have no knowledge of my actual Bitcoin balance, but you still trust that I have more than one Bitcoin because I've made that proper claim. So you may be thinking, where is this useful? Why would I ever want something like this in reality? Well, first and foremost, one of the main targets for hackers in the first place is going after databases where they know usernames and passwords are put together or emails and passwords are put together. Because when they collect that information that is necessary for a website to validate that you are who you say you are, they can then use that information they've stolen to try and log into other websites because people reuse emails and passwords. Now, if you use a zero knowledge proof to log in where you say, essentially, I am who I say I am, but I'm not going to show you my actual username and password or my actual identity. This removes the necessity for platforms like Facebook, for any website really, to actually collect a username and password from you. By using zero knowledge proofs as a method for authentication, you would remove that necessity overall. By allowing us to authenticate with a proof and prove our identity and prove that we have a right to information we're requesting without having to give up a username and password would remove the requirement for these services to store these passwords on their servers. And without them being stored on the servers, hackers have nothing to steal because it isn't even there. This same sort of construct can work between two different users or peers in a system. So if I want to be sure that you have enough balance to cover a transaction that we're about to do, but you don't wanna show me your actual balance, I just need to know if you have enough, then a zero knowledge proof is applicable there as well. Even though we have little to no trust with each other, even though a transaction between the two of us may not expose any information whatsoever, we may not even know each other's identities, it still allows us to trust that we are not going to get scammed in that transaction. In the simplest terms possible, a zero knowledge proof is really just a test of whether or not an attestation is true or false without any actual secret or raw information being exposed to either party. Guys, let's take a quick pause. Please leave me in the comments below an example of how you think zero knowledge proofs could be used in industry or in our daily lives. Bat off a comment and let me know what you think. So you also may be wondering how all this works. And I have to preface this by saying there are a ton of different approaches to zero knowledge proofs. And there are a lot of different problems that people want to solve with zero knowledge proofs, but I'm going to give you the simplest possible example so you can actually understand how the whole thing works in its very purest form. So let's suppose that you want to know if we have the same Bitcoin balance or not without ever exposing your balance and without ever seeing mine. So let's go through that process. And for the sake of this example, let's assume that we can only have anywhere between zero and five Bitcoins. So any of those different ranges. And let's also imagine that I've created this room and that room has six doors. Now I will label each of those doors zero, one, two, three, four, five. That's that zero to five limit that we just talked about. I'm gonna lock each of those doors with their respective keys, and then I'm gonna take those keys out. 
So now you have six locked doors in a room. Now I know for a fact that in this example, I have one Bitcoin. So I'm gonna destroy all the keys for the locked doors except for the one labeled one. Then I'm gonna take that key for the door labeled one and I'm going to walk out of the room and leave it for you. So then you would walk into that room with six doors and in your hand you would have six cards. And on each of those cards, you would have either true or false written on that card. Now with those cards that say true or false, you would place the true card, which there will only be one of, under the door that is closest to your balance. So if you have three BTC, for example, you would put the true card underneath the door labeled three, and you'd put the false card under all of the other doors that do not denote your balance. Then once you've placed your card, you would then walk out of the room and leave it for me again. Then I would walk back in that room with the key for door number one and unlock the door. I would then open that door and find the card that says true or false. Now in this example, we said three Bitcoin was the one that you potentially put your true card under. So I would pick up the card and it would say false. Now because that card says false, I know that we don't have the same amount of Bitcoin, but I still don't know what your balance is and you don't know what mine is because you don't know which door I have the ability to unlock. I can also take this card that says false and show it to you to prove to you that, hey, no, we don't have the same balance, but you will still then not know which door that came from. So you can see that now we've evaluated the truthfulness of an attestation, do we have the same amount of Bitcoin, true or false, without exposing any information to each other. This of course is super simplified and we didn't account for the fact that you can have fractions of Bitcoin, but you get the idea. It was just to illustrate the concept of how a zero knowledge proof works. And of course, there are no doors, there's no room. This is all virtual and digital and based on complex math. Well, obviously, there are more complex use cases than just figuring out whether or not two things are equal. And there's one example that's figuring out which person has more Bitcoin than the other. And this is actually a reference to a common conundrum, a logical puzzle called Yao's Millionaire's Problem, where two millionaires that have a lot of money want to determine who is richer, but they don't want each other to know exactly how much money the other one has. In this case, theoretically, you would want to use the same sort of concept that we constructed using those doors, but instead of this, you would say greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, and eventually, probably through a several proofing processes, you could figure out who actually has more by process of elimination. There are also very popular mechanisms that you've probably heard about online called ZK Snarks and ZK Starks, which have really popularized by projects like Zcash. Those are really difficult to explain without delving deeply into the math behind them. So we're not gonna talk about that in this video, but just be aware that they do exist. Well, guys, I have to say that the world of zero knowledge proofs is still extremely nascent. And I would say there are only a handful of people out there who are actually working on functional versions of zero knowledge proofs. But I genuinely believe though, that this is the future of authentication, the future of secret sharing, the future of making attestations of identity, so on and so forth. There are almost endless applications for functional zero knowledge proofs. So I'm very excited to see what the future holds in this realm. And I'm very excited to share more content about zero knowledge proofs. That being said, let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed this video and if you're curious about what zero knowledge proofs have to offer.